In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Good morning. It's so good to see all of you. Uh, I, I'm sure that many of us are watching the Olympics, and regardless of all the politics that's happening in the background, I'm not interested in talking about that, but I, I'll come back to a topic that is very important, that I think we today can learn so much from those who are competing in the Olympics and in any actually athletic event. And we have to learn actually more from those who lose and who do not make it to the podium more than those who are actually getting to the podium and get their prizes at the end. I'll get to that point in a minute, but first I wanted to highlight a couple things that we have just heard from the story of St. Matthew. We heard the story of the Canaanite woman, a pagan, who came to Christ asking for help. But actually, if we dig, dig deep and, and find that this is very harsh from Christ's side, to say the way he said it to her was a little bit harsh. But if we know that the author of this story is actually Matthew, the evangelist, who intended to get his story to the Jews of his time, then we understand that this story is actually um, like uh, putting it to the face of the Jews, telling them that the faith that you think is exclusive to you is actually open to everyone who is sticking with God, to those who are loyal to God. And even a woman who is a pagan was able to get what she wanted because she was loyal to God and she knew who is the true God and did not have any other gods enshrined in her life. A few weeks ago, we celebrated the baptism of Christ, the Epiphany, and at that event also, John was harsh on the people who came and were baptized by him, and he told them to repent and do works that are equivalent to their repentance, equivalent to the faith that they have received from their fathers, Abraham, Jake, uh, Isaac, and Jacob, and he told them, don't use Abraham as your father as an excuse, because God is able to make sons of the rocks to Abraham. So you have to live a life that is equivalent to really a life in faith, rather than think that you have a favor in the, hand, in the eyes of God just because you are the sons of Abraham. And so, how many times we as Christians think in the, in the same manner? We think that we're doing God a favor by being Christian. We think that we are Christian just because we were born into a Christian family, or we were at some point baptized, but then we live our life away from God, and a life that is not loyal to Christ himself, the one who came and loved us and was crucified for us. So many times we feel that we are entitled to a better treatment from God just because we are called Christians rather than live as Christian uh, life. And it is most heartbreaking for any leader of any community to see that some people who at some point served on the parish council or Sunday school or were here every day for preparing for the festival or any event that happens in the church and then when something unexpected or a challenge happens in their life, they're, they're, they turn their back to God and leave, and they will never come back. It is unfortunate that during this, their time serving in the church, they did not have the, the experience with God to have this personal relationship with Him so that they will stick with Him as much as He sticks with us. So that's why the epistle that we have just heard from St. Paul to the Corinthians, actually he is uh, admonishing them for their lack of faith. And he tells them very clearly, you are the temple of the living God. Because God said, I will live in them and move among them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. I will welcome you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters. And here's what Paul says to them. Since we have these promises, it is God who promises us to be with us. It is the promise that comes, the initiative comes from God first and foremost. 
He is the one who promises that I will be with you. So because we have this promise, Paul says to the people, cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit and make holiness perfect in the fear of God. So when we get a promise from God to be with us, then the least that we can do is to stick with him and to live a life that is appropriate for someone who follows the true God. We have this promise and we have to be careful not to enshrine any other God because then those people who are most loyal to God will have the true prize as the pagan woman was able to get their prize today. Going back to the Olympics and the athletes, if, we, if you can imagine someone saying that I am an athlete, but when it comes to running a mile, they are not able to even run a mile, we will all understand that this person is delusional. He does not know what an athlete means. And then if we look at all those people who are competing in the Olympics, and see that only three or a few of them will get to the podium to get their prizes. There are many people who had struggled for years and prepared for years so that they can compete on the Olympics and they know themselves that they might get there but not be able to get any prize. They still prepare themselves. They still do the hard work. They still take years and years to prepare and knowing if they are not going to win, even their athletic career is not going to be a long time. They might compete for a few years, but then they have to go and do something else because their bodies are not able to take the challenge of the Olympics. So if people who are competing for prizes like the prizes they get in the Olympics and only for a short period of time, how come we Christians not have to do the same work, the same challenge? We're not invited as Christians to live an easy life. We are coming as Christians, we are invited to live a hard life because the challenge of sticking with God for His promises, despite all the challenges that we have in our lives, are worth it. Just as much as it is worth it for those athletes to prepare for years and compete and not win at the end. So if we as Christians cherish our identity as Christians, then we have to give heed to what the St. Paul just said today, to live our life in holiness so that we deserve to be called the sons and daughters of God. Amen.